iced tea, paddy wagon, Tijuana taxi. For anyone growing up in the late 60s and early 70s, these images bring back a floodgate of memories. Tom Daniel, an industrial designer by trade, created 75 classic monogram models, many that have been reissued time after time. Tom is one of the most creative hot rod and custom designers of the 20th century. Hey guys, welcome back to part two of the Tom Daniel Fire Iron Truck build. Um, what we, where we left off was we were doing the wood grain pieces for the truck. Um, if you recall on the box art, everything here is basically black. The, the uh, ladders are black and the back piece here is black and that's the wood grain pieces. And I just thought it was too bland, so I wanted to add some color, maybe a little distinctiveness, character to it, whatever you'd like to call it. Not that the black is bad, it just wasn't doing it for me. And it was a multi-step process. So far, what we did to start this is we painted all the wood green pieces, or wood pieces, a light color, a light tan. In this case, I used the Delta Ceram Coat Toffee Brown. Give it a nice coat, let it dry. Part two. Two is that we applied a coat of future over all the parts, protecting that uh, acrylic coat. Okay. Once that dried, we took burnt umber, okay, and we roughly painted it all over all of our wood grain parts, haphazardly um, putting it everywhere, leaving blotches that weren't um, coated. You know, just like a rough, a rough, uh, a rough coating. Um, then we let that dry for several hours. Again, the reason we let it dry is because the oil paints take a lot longer to dry than the, the acrylics. Um, once that was not fully dried, but dried, we took a brush and what we did is we painted and we pulled the oil paints across our wood grained to um, toward uh, in the in the direction of the grain and we pulled it until we got the color we des desired now you do not have to use toffee brown you do not have to use burnt umber you can use any colors that you choose to get the ultimate color of your choice of wood but if you'll notice my ladders are a little bit darker than the planks for the back yet I use the same colors all it was is the amount of paint of the oil color that I pulled off of the wood and I was still able to maintain the wood effect here the color and everything and here I just left it a little heavier so it's all on how you do it so those are the steps I did so far now after you get to this stage where you've pulled all of the oil color off and you've got the color that you desire you must let it dry and it's going to take days to dry oil paints take forever um, in this case when I went to go do the final step um, lucky I was doing it on the other side um, I started to do it and I'll show you how to do it in a moment but what I'm getting at is if you look here you can see it's a little lighter right here in this corner that's because after three days this oil the oil paint was still um, kind of wet so my step my next step was pulling the oil paint off and that's not what I want so I let it set for another couple days so I think it's been almost a week so we're ready to go on to the next step the final step to get our wood grain and also we're going for that heavy lacquered look that's the idea um, the ladders back then, the wood grain back in the days of old, and I mean older than me, um, everything was very heavily shellacked um, and lacquered and everything like that. So that's the look that we're going for. So the final step to give it that ultimate lacquered look is we're going to use this. This is the Tamiya Clear Yellow or X24, the go, those that go only by numbers, which is clear yellow. Now, again, so you don't have the problem that I had earlier, make sure you do 
when you're ready to do this, if you choose to do this, you do it on a spot that's not seen to make sure that your oils are dry. Because like I said, if I didn't do it here, I would have started pulling off the color and I didn't like that. But all you have to do is you start taking a little bit of the color and now just start painting it on top of your wood grain and again keeping in the direction of the grain. Just pull it through, coat the whole thing, keep your uh, keep your um, you want to keep it thin okay you don't want to have uh, globs and everything on it because when it dries it's going to dry really thick. You just want this to have that yellow look. Now you can also use the clear orange also would give your wood a whole different look okay which way is better neither way is better all it is is it depends on the look that you're going for okay so neither way is wrong so we're just going to start going through this now people have been commenting on this effect or this process uh, actually the response has been very good um, but in the sake of transparency, I can't take the credit for this. I am just retelling the story on how to do this. This um, I learned this from a master model builder and um, prop builder. Um, he had a YouTube channel. He had a couple uh, communities, modeling communities, and he even had a modeling show um, which as far as modeling shows go it had to be the best that I'd ever seen not that there's a lot of them but this guy's show was probably the best that I'd ever seen because he started he did his show contained everything it's it contained the very basics um, for the beginning modeler um, he did detail work for um, the advanced modeler and then for the really advan uh, advanced people he would do um, scratch building, uh, building stuff just from scratch and showing you the components that you need to make it and um, and uh, and also did props, which was really cool. I mean, he'll tell you, show you how to make some sort of sci-fi phaser gun and stuff like that. Um, but his show didn't last long. He kind of just disappeared and faded into obscurity. Pretty sad because he really had a great show. Um, but his stuff is still out there if you want to. Take a look for Jay Barron uh, or his G Plus community, which is called Evil Duck Workshop. Um, there were rumors for a long time that he had more stuff coming, but it never transpired. So I don't know whatever happened to it. He's just one of those myths, kind of like Jimmy Hoffa, that um, just kind of faded into obscurity. But yeah, it was this was his process. Um, I'm just like I said, I'm just reposting what he did, and not even as well as he did it. But um, you get the idea. So if you can see here, I know the lighting is bad and the camera just doesn't pick it up. But the yellow is really giving it that classic, old-fashioned glint. And when it dries, it should look pretty good. So, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Um, I hope this was helpful for people, that they like it. And uh, maybe they'll try it or give their different variation on getting it to work. Um, a couple people have actually already told me how they've done something similar and got the same effects. Not exact. And it's not an exact science. You don't have to do it this way to get the effect. I mean, there's all different ways. This is just one that I saw. I thought it was cool. I liked the look of it. So um, I decided to try it. Um, anyway, this ladder, these ladders are very tedious. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the camera, um, which will be seconds for you. I'm going to go finish this up and then we'll be back in a moment. All right. Again, if you get a chance, check them out. Um, Jay Barron evil duck workshop you can find them i believe i believe evil duck has got a facebook page but definitely on the g plus community definitely on youtube you can find it too and you can go back and check out his uh his episodes and stuff very very talented builder um it's a shame that it just didn't um 
carry on for a lot longer because it's a show that can I could watch over and over again. Actually, that's all I can do because he doesn't produce any more episodes. But anyway, I digress. Um, I'll be back in a couple minutes. All right, now that the wood grain pieces are done, <clears throat> it's time to turn to the rest of the truck. And using, I finally decided on the dark scarlet color, okay, from Americana. Um, mix up the batch, shot all the remaining pieces of the truck, um, and everything came out fairly well. Um, once it's together, I'll give it a, a gloss coat with some future and give it a shine. But for now, I'm happy with the color. I think it gives it that, lack of a better word, that authentic um, antique fire engine look. I um, started working on the chassis a little bit more. Um, got the first coat, had to do it by hand of the skid plates. Okay. Um, I would go over it a little bit more because some spots you could see the red showing through and then the edges still have to be done. So I'll get that and another coat. Um, so that's looking good. I did the underside also, painted that the same color. Um, so that looks like that. This is going to sit in here like so. All right, give you an idea what it's going to look like with a little bit of black. I think it's going to give it a nice little contrast. Okay, the wood looks good. I think um, one of the final touches after it's all done is going to be doing the uh, the gold around the fenders. Really want to get that done. I think it's going to set it off really nice. Um, I did start painting. The gold here around the rims and I did the hubs just to give it a little throw a little um, contrast to it because of all the the red but uh, I'll let this dry uh, do another second coat and then uh, some touch-ups I'll have to do uh, so that's that um, a little bit of uh, silver here or aluminum that's gonna be the that's the skid plate the floor plate it's gonna sit about here um, basically your pedals would be here uh, that's what that, that is but we're on our way um, the motor some people have saw the motor in the background um, I haven't really showed it yet but here's the motor um, I did it all up in gold I thought it looked pretty good in gold uh, a nice contrasting color um, to everything else uh, it would work really well um, but I have to admit I'm stuck at this point I don't know what else to do to break it up um, like the valve covers were gold plated I stripped them off using the uh, the oven cleaner um, I didn't want them to be gold because with the gold engine it's too much um, I thought of making it black but when the headers the hose headers come out of here it's going to be too again too much black and need something a little contrasting um, what I was thinking of along those same lines is probably painting it black and then adding some red inlays to the grooves on it if you can see this if I hold this up zoom in a little bit you can see the grooves there I'm wondering if I can't get those grooves to catch some red paint and I think the red and the black might set it off. It might be cool that way. I'm not sure yet. I haven't decided. But I have to work on that a little bit. Um, haven't decided about if I'm going to wire it yet either. I'm thinking if I was, the wires coming down would also throw off some, some color contrasts and make it a little bit more interesting but I haven't decided if I was going to do that yet depending on what color wires I chose I was thinking yellow but we have to again wait and see but anyway that's where we are right now color like I said is applied uh, we have to 
you know it's been sitting for a couple days so it's pretty good uh, gotta go like I said tonight I did the touch-ups on the gold I have to go back and do some more of that touch it up uh, second coat touch-ups and so forth like that so um, that's it for right now so uh, hang on we'll be right back all right welcome back so next step what we're gonna do is what what the heck was that an inadvertent whistle during my my video are you kidding me that's just ridiculous that's just crazy an inadvertent video I, I might as well just well no need going on from here but I inadvertent whistle I hate that so much so much I mean I hate that word so much that I'd write I'd like to go out and buy a restaurant, name it the inadvertent whistle, just so I can burn it down. Jesus Christ, what was going on there?